Okay. Okay. So my name is Gloria Braxton, and I'm a watercolorist. The name of my piece today is 1963 Freedom Day Participants or 2018 Black Lives Matter Activists. I wanted to bring this to the more things change, the more they ch stay the same show to show that this could be 1963, but this can be 2018. That is the goal. So that you can see your father, you can see your son, you can see your uncle in this piece because there are no faces on our black men on the floor here. Um, this is 1963. It was advertised that Freedom Day was going to be an opportunity of in integration. We were going to have the opportunity to vote. We were going to have the opportunity to vote alongside other uh, people in the neighborhood in Alabama. However, once those uh, black people in that neighborhood got to the voters line, they were met with FBI, they were met with state troopers, local police, um, and they were by the dozens. As you can see, the, the colors represent each different type of entity that were present that day for those people. And they stood there, they stood on line, and they, they voted. They only took three voters an hour. Three voters an hour. So they were thirsty, they were hungry. And these men represented the people that were coming to the line to give them water, give them food. This was a representation of cohesiveness in the community. It's not just men on the ground um, being beaten. This are people that had already voted or possibly weren't voting yet, but were helping the people to vote. So this here was so important for me to do because yes, this is 1963, but this could have been 2018. This could be my brothers. There's men in my family, so um, this piece took quite some time for me to do approximately uh, 45 to 50 hours of just layering and layering and layering and gathering it. I'd spent a lot of time on the police officers because I wanted you to see their one note. Even though there's different colors in here, there's still one note. They go by an energy, but these black men go by an energy as well. And they're uplifting each other even when you don't see it. They're still uplifting each other because they're connected. So this was important for me to do. So I'm happy that this is uh, featured in the show today. And I'm so happy that everyone's coming out to see it. Um, and I'm going to get emotional, so I'm going to stop talking because I don't want to cry on camera. Uh, thank you. So we are here with Melvin Isaac. And he has two pieces in the The More Things Change, The More They Stay the Same exhibit that's happening here at Restoration Plaza. The energy is very wonderful right now. So we are going to talk to Melvin about his piece. So Melvin, thank you so much for being here. I'm, I love this piece. And I'm not just saying that, I really do. So tell me, what inspired you to create this piece? Okay, what inspired me to create this particular piece right here? Uh, because all the situation that you see around of us, our brothers and sisters, uh, black, brown, blue, whatever color that you want to call ourselves. But what I see, and I continue seeing it, that a lot of things have changed. A lot of things have changed, but some things remain the same. Now, what I was thinking about when I was doing this, that I see a lot of young people, and even though things is still, you know, I mean, it changed, you know, from the computer, from this, you, you went to Wall Street, you got a good economical advancement, and you went to college, and uh, politically, things changed with the presidency. You had Obama, and he opened up doors. You had people before him. Now you got somebody that's up there now. But what I see okay. is that you got a lot of people still in the house on their computer, and they locked up. So how important was it for you to portray this particular piece here tonight? Very important, very important, because uh, at this particular plaza here, the restoration, okay. this is historical. Absolutely. And you're going to have many people coming here looking and wondering what's going on. And so this would capture their attention because not only do you got people that they lock themselves up, put it that way. You imprison yourself. Absolutely. 
And uh, that could be, it's in your own imagination, whether it could be drugs, alcohol, it could be abuse, family abuse, it could be a, a disappointment with a job or got fired, it could be a relationship, it could be anything. But you end up locking yourself up and you remain that way no matter what's going on around you. So you lock yourself up. And I thank you so much for just sharing what this piece meant to you and sharing it with all of us and the community. It's very important because we are in a stage where we are bound and shackled by certain things. So I'm very happy that you portrayed that this evening. I want to, if you're okay, go over to your next painting okay. so you can explain that to us. What was your inspiration on this one? Okay, uh, my inspiration on this particular one right here it was politically because of the uh, presidency as we see it now. I was at the poll. Uh, actually, I was a poll worker. And I sensed at that particular time that something wasn't right because they was fighting. There was this. It was, I mean, it was back and forth. And then at basically almost at the end, I knew that she lost. Just felt it. When I finished, I went on the bus and everybody, everything was quiet. The whole world seemed like it went a whole different direction. So at that point, I started thinking, you know, what is, what, how would, how would, how would I explain that in a painting? So I discovered, I decided to do something like this. So this is my inspiration to let people see and it, it's like the words, the picture says a thousand words. So I had, uh, let's say. Do you feel like you had a responsibility as an artist at this point to create something of this magnitude? Because this is powerful. Do you think that you had that responsibility? Yes, yes. I, I really felt that this was my uh, obligation, my responsibility to deliver this message to the uh to society, to the world. Uh, so this way you'll never forget what's going on, never. So you see, you know this is the president uh -huh. and you see it make America great again. Okay. He got a bat in his hand okay. and you see these brass knuckles and where he's fit and the way he's looking. And you know, uh, this guy right here, I mean, I ain't gotta explain no who that is. Who else is it? <laughs> it's in the, who else is it, right? So, right here, he, the, the guy that got the newspaper, he's trying to figure this out. He said, what the? And he said, well, he's just concerned about building the wall, deporting undocumented immigrants, okay. separating families, repealing the Affordable Care Act, fake news, and refusing to release his tax statement. This is what he's concerned about nothing more so now when you think about that i mean us african-american been hearing this type of witness witness this fake news for over 400 years that's all we've been hearing is this this type of stuff so this is what he got to understand you know and he's the guys that put him in the office absolutely absolutely and i'm just blown away by your talent and I thank you for sharing your views because a lot of times we have artists and we don't get the opportunity to hear from them right we don't get the opportunity to see where, where the passion lies and what did you want to convey so we can see it and we can interpret it ourselves but you giving us this viewpoint I myself I appreciate it because I'm a viewer just like everyone else so thank you Melvin and I appreciate you for speaking with me today Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Imani Pringle. I know the theme of the show um, reminded me of um, of like the well, it made me compare like the um, the Olympians who who took a, um, a stand against injustice in 1968, and how it compares to what Kalin Kaepernick and his um, and his teammates. Uh, did by taking a knee in 2016 because like in both cases they were protesting injustice and in both cases they were punished for it so um, yeah that's pretty much what inspired me to paint this
This piece is entitled America's Accent Wall. And I started it years ago because I was kind of angry about the things that are going on with people of color, especially of men. So I decided to do a piece to show a mother's pain um, when something goes on with another child being killed in America. And as you can see on the painting, the American flag is upside down. And an upside down flag represents distress. And black America is in distress. So I wanted to show that. But I also wanted to show faces of the people who were killed by police brutality and by other means. Um, and so this represents the America that I see. Um, and you can see a mother's pain as she holds her child because she does not know what the future holds for her child. And while she can hold him in her arms and protect him, she's doing that while she still has an opportunity. So that's why I did the piece. Um, my name is Frederica Hartley. I'm an artist and I've been an artist for quite some time. I own Zion Gallery, which is a gallery that I operate out of my home. I showcase my work as well as the work of other artists. Um, I've been in the art field for a long time, and I love art. I love supporting art, and I like doing shows. So anytime I get an opportunity to be around artists, I'm happy. Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon. Good evening. My name is Brenda Mattingly, and I'm here with the Fulton Art Fair, exhibiting my piece, Mother and Child. Um, this work I have done for over 25 years. I've been a bead artist. So, uh, this work here, I selected in this show to show the connectedness to the community of the mother and the child and how things will stay the same no matter how the outside world changes. Mother and child will always be. I like to talk about the work itself. The work, as you can see, is made out of beads. That is my medium. That's what I do with all kind of work that I have purchased all over the world is always in beads. Now, um, this here piece, as I said before, was selected just for this show, and uh, I hope you like it. Remember, my name is Brenda Mattingly. My organization is called Unique Beating. If you would like, any information, you can contact the uh, Fulton Art Fair and they can give you some information. Okay? My name is Alethea Sapi Menes and this is my work. It's called Ewoke and it's a mixed media acrylic. The reason why I created this particular piece of work is because um, back in the day when people were coming from church, we used to pay attention to a lot of things in our community and did not understand what was going on and we would share it with our younger folks. So, as you can tell, there's a young man in this piece and there's an elder in this piece and it's mixed cultures in this piece. So it's not just people of color, it's people that belongs to different sex in life. So, it's important that we pay attention to what's going on within our community and to stay awoke, to ask the questions, to see what's going on, and to stand strong in our convictions and to make sure that when we're going somewhere that we're paying attention. So that's what basically the painting is about. It's about paying attention within our community and how our community moves. So that's what it's all about. And as you can see, we have a lot of symbolism, which is the tree, because the tree is a strong um, trunk, which represents our culture because with the tree is our roots and our roots are very very important so you have your family you have your roots and it spreads out amongst everybody so that's what this painting is basically about and the reason why we're here because we're celebrating um, the past as well as the future and a lot of the paintings that are here represents that so we're here celebrating who we are as African Americans and people of indigenous places and that's why we're here 
Hello, my name is Sadiki Shikalia, and this is the day that we celebrating the 60th anniversary through a show at Restoration for the Fulton Art Fair. And I've been a member of Fulton Art Fair since 1984 and president for three years, but today I'm an artist. And this piece that I have here is called Mama Africa. It's a tribute to Ooh, Maxine Waters, and what we have here is Mandela and Coretta Scott King. And they're hugging her because she's going through her struggle today, like they had to do way back. And it's dedicated to strong warrior sister spirits. And so I I felt her because there's a lot of turmoil, people tr trying to kill her and all this, but I just wanted to show her some love and let me know that the ancestors are protecting her. And on her outfit right here, this is a Sankofa symbol, and it means nothing before me or behind me can bother me, for I go forth with my ancestors' blessings. Peace. Hello, my name is Marcy Wilson. I am also an artist, but I, I'm a photographer, and I'm here to celebrate the 60th anniversary for the Fulton Art Fair. Um, 60 years is a very long time, and it, uh, for such a long time, it's very important that we do celebrate our artists, our black artists. I'm here and I am, my heart is full at seeing this wonderful art that we have out here. And one of the things that I really, really want to express more than anything else is that we as a people must invest in black art. We must buy and support our black artists. Art, a lot of people think that art, being an artist is, and, and buying art is all about luxury. No, it's about having the beauty of, of the beauty and uh, of our of ourselves in our arms our, our um, of what our artist expresses of how who we are on whether it's um, via paintings and photography it's important that we support our artists I for one am one that started collecting art and I wake up every morning because I started the put place in the artwork in my bedroom and I wake up every morning and I see great artists that I have placed in my room such as um, Danny Simmons, Baron Claiborne, Lamero Gatewood, um, Nakazi who lives in a Jamaican artist and other artists that I'm solely building and of course myself. I, one of the things I do hope to have on my wall is Otto Neal and his pieces are here. So anyway, I just want to say that by art, I one day watched um, the Antique Roadshow and um, this one woman, a black woman, thankfully, had Henry O'Tanner, that she had no clue who this man was, and no clue of the art that she had in her, uh, in, on, in possession, uh, on her possession. She had a Henry O'Tanner piece. It was one of his um, very... Um, rare pieces of religious religious art she paid what $150 that for a painting that ended up costing uh, that's been worth a hundred thousand so do you understand why I say collect our art support our artists because you never know where it will go stop buying sneakers <laughs> stop buying stuff like what has it walks out of the, the, the dealership or wherever that de depreciates buy things that will ap appreciate and that you can pass it on to your children. Don't let other people have our art. You have it. You own it and you put it on your wall. That's all I have to say. This show is up here until August 26. Make it here. And do yourself a favor. Invest in art. Um, what could I say? One thing I want to say. They have um, layaways. <laughs> Make it happen. Um, once again, I'm Marcy Wilson. I'm just an an art enthusiast. Thank you. Yes. I am the good God Almighty, so Zach's 
Bushman and Bushwick, King of Kings County. I came out to this show to support my elders, Otto Neal, Emmett Wigglesworth, and Sada Keisha, amongst others. Um, they've been working really hard, making artwork for the community, with the vision of the community. This, the strongest artists of the generation that gave birth to artists like me. And without those roots, we'd have nothing to stand on. It's sad that our community doesn't value these artists as much as they deserve to be valued. Thanks.